coven con convent? Everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up part two out of three. I read a total of 18 books this month so I'll leave part one down below and these are the next six that I read so without further ado let us get started. The first book that I read is The Beautiful by Renee Adier and I gave this a three out of five stars. This book follows Celine who is fleeing Paris in 1872. She ends up in New Orleans with the hopes of starting a new life. She ends up living in a convent and she becomes entangled with the underworld of New Orleans and Le Cours de Lyons and their leader Sebastian and that's when bodies start piling around her and Celine begins to think that the killer is after her. So like I said I gave this a three out of five stars. I was pretty bored during the beginning of it which kind of sucked. I definitely started enjoying it a lot more about halfway through and I did really like Celine as a main character. I like how she went against the societal norms and constraints that she had put upon her. I really liked the tension between Bastien and Celine. I think that the banter was really fun to read but I was a little thrown off about the shift between the hate to love like it was very abrupt to me which like it might have just been me but I was not a fan of that I also was not a fan of the possible love triangle that we're gonna get in the second book I'm really hoping we're not but I guess we'll see when the damned comes out although I did like Celine and Bastian as characters I think that Odette and Pippa were definitely the stars of this book for me. I really liked the relationship between Celine and these two girls. They were both very different from each other but they were so supportive of Celine and everything that she did just in different ways. I think that Odette was probably my favorite out of the two. She just made me so happy every time she was on page. The biggest complaint I probably have for this book is the amount of time it took for the vampires to come into the story. I just wanted more so I vote more vampires for 2020 and thank you. The next book that I'm going to talk about is probably the favorite of the month for me. It is The Gracier by Kim Leggett. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Tierney James who is about to set off on her Gracier. The girls who are 16 are sent to this compound in the middle of nowhere in order to spend a year there where they are to get rid of the magic that they possess that they can use to control the men of the county. For the span of that year, the girls are hunted by poachers who wait for them to leave the camp in order to murder them and cut them up and sell their parts on the black market. If you do not return from your grace year, your family is punished, and if you do return, then you are either married off or sent to work somewhere in the county, but either way, you are drastically changed. I knew I was going to love this book, but I didn't really grasp how much I was going to love the book until I started reading it. I really loved the writing of this. I thought that it was super addictive and I couldn't put it down. The relationships and the woman's rights in this book were so well done. Girls are taught at such a young age to be competitive with one another and to judge and hate each other and I just loved how this book tried to argue that. It tries to teach us to be more empathetic towards one another and just see the world from each other's shoes, which I just really loved. I love Tyranny so much as a main character. She's definitely not perfect. She makes a lot of mistakes and has a lot of flaws. She's just so loyal and fights for what she believes in. I was rooting for her right from the very beginning. I really liked how she tried to get all the girls to work together as a team in the camp, but not all the girls were willing to cooperate. I also really liked Kirsten, which is surprising because because you're not supposed to like her. I thought it was really interesting how she genuinely thought that what she was doing was the right thing to do and I just wanted to know more about why she was acting the way that she did because obviously there's something going on there and I just wanted to know her whole backstory and I would love to have a spin-off of Kirsten's like childhood because I want to know more. If I had to make one complaint for this book I think that the romance should have been left out. I didn't really see a point 
of it other than like shock value at the end but that's just me i am beyond excited for the movie that is going to be released who knows when but when i started reading this book i had no idea it was being made into a movie but now that i know like i need it right this second but i highly 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 recommend this book if you haven't checked it out it's really good Next book I read was The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Everybody and their mother is reading this right now and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I wanted to like it a lot more than I did. It follows Rowan Kane who arrives on the doorstep of Heather Bray house where she took a live-in nanny job. She did not expect this job to end in a child's death or for her to be in jail awaiting the trial for the murder. I'm a huge fan of unlikable, unreliable narrators, so I personally really liked Rowan. I thought it was very interesting to learn fragments of her story and what happened in letter format to the lawyer. I think that the biggest complaint I have for the book is its pacing. It was very slow and all of the like creepy things that happened became very repetitive after the third or fourth time that it occurred. Nothing really happened until the last 50 pages where pretty much everything happens and it just felt very rushed because of that. I think that the ending was also very abrupt and it didn't really feel like a complete story. I didn't see the big plot twist coming, so that was very nice, but other than that, like, it was just a very average read for me, so 3.5 out of 5. The next book I read was Girls of Storm and Shadows by Natasha Nagan, and this is the second book in the Girls of Paper and Fire series. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. I liked it, but definitely not as much as I liked the first book in the series. I really liked the depiction of PTSD and trauma in this. I really liked how the author explored how different people respond to trauma in different ways, but every way that they respond with is valid. I also really liked how complex Ren and Lei's relationship was in this. I was fully invested throughout the entire thing. I liked Lei for the most part in this. I think that it was very important for her to learn how to defend herself and fight along her peers for the fight against the Emperor, but she did make a lot of stupid mistakes that really made me want to like shake her and just why are you doing those things? I also don't know how I feel about Ren in this because a lot of the things that she did were very out of character in my opinion from what I saw in the first book to this book. And that may be because she's under a lot of stress because of the rebellion, which is understandable, but she just rubbed me the wrong way in this. Bo was 100% my favorite character in this book. I think that he was just such a sweet little cinnamon roll and I just wanted to protect him at all costs. I really liked how he was often the comedic relief to very stressful, tense situations in the book. I also really liked his sister Nita and I'm definitely looking forward to learn more about them, hopefully, in the next book. I'm definitely interested in picking up the third book, like I said. The cliffhanger left me, like, shocked, and I want to know what happens next to my girls. The next book I read was Hideaway by Nicole Ludring, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows a family who is run by Gloria Janes, who puts up the front of being a very caring, thoughtful mother in front of the neighbors, but when she is alone with her children, she is very controlling and manipulative. So when her husband, Telly, ends up leaving her for another woman, she takes it out on her two children, 13-year-old Rowan and 7-year-old Maisie. After running away from home, Rowan finds himself in the unlikely companionship with a homeless man named Carl. Meanwhile, Gloria is pleading to the world for Rowan's safe return while she is also plotting on how she's going to get Telly to return as well. I could not stop reading this book. It was so dysfunctional and just the thought of how these children had to go through that and then realizing that there are actual real children that go through this daily was just like so upsetting to me. It was honestly just like shocking to see Gloria do some of the things that she does but have no remorse whatsoever and completely think that what she was doing was acceptable. I really like how the author chose to tell the story in two points of view, from Rowan on his adventure with Carl, but then also from Maisie's point of view, so you could see that she was okay-ish in her home with Gloria while Rowan was away. It was really interesting to read from the kids' point of view because you were hearing it from their voice and trying to understand what their mother was doing. Like, Maisie's seven years old and she tries to justify the actions of her mother because of her naivety and it was just 
really interesting to see that. I was going to give this a 4 out of 5 stars, but I ended up dropping it to 3.5 only because at times Maisie's chapters, she's supposed to be 7, but she sounds more like she's four or five. So this is going to sound kind of stupid, but I work with kids a lot of all ages. And this year I specifically worked with seven and eight year olds. So I feel like I kind of understand how they talk. And just the way Maisie talked was more of a younger child. And maybe that's like a developmental thing, but I just was not convinced because some of the things that she was saying was very mature, but then other things was very childish. And it just like didn't flow well. This was the first book by this author that I've read, but I'm definitely intrigued to pick up more of their work. I'm not 100% sure if they have any more work, but I'm definitely going to be checking it out because I really liked this. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about in this wrap-up is Reign of the Fallen by Sarah Glenn Marsh. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Odessa, who is a necromancer, better known as the Sparrow. Her sole job is to continuously kill and bring back the King of Carthia in order for him to be able to rule longer in his kingdom. Once the dead is brought back from the Deadlands, they are forced to cover their entire bodies head to toe with fabric because if anybody living is to see their flesh at any point of time, they will turn into something called a shade, which are basically bloodthirsty savages that will destroy everything in their path. Once the dead become a shade, they must be burned in order to get rid of them, and that means that they can never be risen again. So when shades start showing up, among the kingdom. Odessa has to figure out who is turning people into shades and why before it's too late. I really loved the characters in this book. I thought that they all were very unique and lovable in their own way. I really liked Odessa as a main character. She cared so deeply about those she loved and would go beyond what she needed to in order to protect them. She was also bisexual, which was pretty cool. I really liked Evander as well. His joking personality was just very refreshing for the story. I can definitely see why Odessa loved him so much. I was also not 100% sure about his sister, Meredith. When she was first introduced, I was not a fan. She definitely grew on me as the story progressed. I was also a big fan of her bear companion, Lysander. He was so cute and just, I loved him. He was just a really good asset to the story, in my opinion. Anytime there's an animal, I am usually drawn towards them. I was also a big fan of Jack, Simone, and Daniel. I think that they were all very good assets to the story as well and all brought something unique. Casmira was also one of my favorite characters and I definitely hope that we see more of her in the second book because it kind of hinted that she'd be more involved. I also was really intrigued by the magic system in this. It was basically the magic that you trained with was dependent on your eye color, which was really interesting. So for example, those with blue eyes were necromancers, those with green eyes were beast mages, hazel eyes were healers, gray eyes worked with the weather, and then brown eyes were inventors. The biggest complaint I had for the book was that the villain was like way too obvious. I was able to call it as soon as they were introduced. I was like, that's the bad person. I also really liked how grief was portrayed in this book. It was interesting to see how so many people in the kingdom reacted to the death that occurred and how their responses were different from one another. I also really liked how substance abuse was discussed in this book and how it affected not only the person who was abusing but those around them as well. I am definitely intrigued to get my hands on the second book just to see where the story progresses to because I want to know what happens with these characters. Alright everybody, so that was part two of my May wrap-up. Let me know down below if you have read any of these and what you thought of them and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!